What's going on YouTube? This is what we Josh do, and we have another video on a portable power station. Now, some of you are still gonna, you know, not even watch this video because of the fact that it's a portable power station, and I've done a lot of videos on portable power stations, but some of you are because you are maybe interested in this brand, or you like the content that I post, or, you know, whatever reason. So I'm posting this because I've definitely heard of the brand, and they did reach out to me, and they did ask me to review this, and I said yes, because honestly, I love having these things. So, first look at the box, we see Vitoman, or Vitoman, Super Safe Life BMS Power Station Flash Beat 600. This is 499 watt hours, that's pretty good for a small unit. 500 watt hours will keep things going for quite a while, and then 600 watts which is very nice because like I have power stations that only do 300 watts, but I constantly have things that require like 350, 400, 450, even 500 watts. And this can handle up to 600. So but let's just take a look at the box. So pretty simple, same thing on the other side. This side has the specifications. So it is the PB86, it's LifePo4. It's gonna be 400 watts max for the AC input and uh, DC Anderson input 200 watts. So that means solar uh, up to 50 volts, which is pretty cool because 50 volts opens the door to a lot more different panels that can be connected to it. And 600 watts peak, so it'll surge up to 1200. It's pure sine wave. And the USB-A can do up to 12 volts and the USB-C can do up to 20 volts for 100 watts. So my RG Ally X can charge at 100 watts. My Steam Deck can charge at 45 watts. My Nintendo Switch 2 can charge at, you know, up to 45 watts or so. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get this thing out of its box. And let's break the seal. All right, so we get a user manual. We get some friendly tips. So this is gonna be like the basic, definitely pay attention to this stuff. And then Vitoman, you've got some Vitomon stickers, quite a few of them actually. And then we have a goodies box. We'll go through that after we get this thing out of here. All right, that's it. All right, let's undress the power station here. And right away I see a few things. I see a part up here that looks like, yep, it can open up. I see a light, which is absolutely huge. I have uh, been through power outages where something with a light on it has been incredibly useful. Or as you're going to carry this thing to where you're gonna need to plug stuff in, being able to see where you're going while you're carrying this, is just massive. Any sort of light on a power station is massive. All right, and then here is basically the same exact stuff that you saw earlier, or at least it should be. So the specifications that were on the box. So anyways. I need to get one of those little things that like spins stuff around. So taking a look at the side, we've got a big old thing. Kind of looks like a speaker, but it's gonna be a fan. Okay, so there's a little fan right here. It's a little guy. I thought this would be a much bigger fan. At least it's a lot of airflow that can go through there, but yeah, just one little fan right there. All right, we got a nice big opening on the opposite side. And does that have a fan? Oh yes. So this whole thing is a fan. And unlike the other side where it's just a little portion at the top, this is a big fan, like a maybe an 80 or 120 mil. That's a, that's nice to see. And then on the top of the unit, we've got this little door that you can put your instruction manual or some cables, like your solar cables, your DC cables, stuff like that, which we're gonna go through the goodies box. But, and then, so taking a look at the front of the unit, we've got AC input and it's labeled. So it says 400 watts. Solar input, 200 watts. DC input, 200 watts. So there's your Anderson, your DC, your AC. And then you've got something here. Oh, okay, cool. So this will hook up like a pair of jumper cables to uh, charge up a car battery or, or jump a car battery off. And uh, then here we've got the DC output, which I've got a few different DC fridges. So these things are absolutely just awesome to have because you can keep that fridge going. 
and I have ran DC fridges on the AC port, and I'll tell you what, you get many more hours of use if you go DC to DC. And if you don't need the inverter, don't use the inverter, because the inverter just takes away some of that power. So then we have a port here for DC. It says we have two 100 watt ports here, then we've got two USB A's. So that's nice to see two USB-C instead of less. And then we've got two outlets, which is definitely better than having one. Then we have a screen, and we're gonna unbox the goodies real quick so that we can start charging this thing up. All right, so this opens. All right, so in here it's pretty basic. We've got the AC charge cord. We have a USB-C to USB-C cable, and then we have a car port. So you can use your car cigarette lighter to charge this battery. Now it's gonna charge at like 100 to 110 watts using your car cigarette lighter but that's still better than nothing. All right, so we're gonna take the AC cord here that it comes with, and we're gonna plug that in. I like how every single thing is in the front, so you don't have things sticking out the back or the side or whatever. That's pretty cool. So we'll plug that in. And then this uh, top little area, we can just keep this cable and this cable. That is just absolutely huge. I love that so much. And then as you can see, we are currently charging at 399 watts from the wall. And you can also see here on the wall outlet that we're getting 408 from the wall. The unit is currently at 76%. And then if you press the DC button, it shows that there's output so zero. So turn DC on. No light here doesn't appear, but you can see here that it's got the changes and has output. Same with the USB maybe, yep. And then AC, oh, that fan kicked on and it was loud and then it turned down. You can turn all these things on at one time. Oh, down here, I'm just now seeing that. Wow, that was a delay for me. There you go, all those are off. So DC, DC, USB, AC. Fan kicks on, uh, let me let you hear that actually. So the fan temporarily peaks and it goes fast. I can feel a lot of air coming out the left side here. So that's pretty awesome. We're gonna charge this thing up pretty quickly. Now, what if we need to charge something else? So this should charge at 330 watts through the AC port and we'll turn on. I did hear the fan turn on on this side for the charging. Let's let you hear that. So the right fan has more of a higher tone than the left fan. And the left fan definitely pushes a lot more air. It's just a bigger fan. So it looks like this one turns on to uh, cool off the stuff inside it because it's currently charging at 400 watts. And I can actually feel the air from this fan coming out this end, but this fan right now doesn't appear to be on. I don't think it's on. It might be just at a very low speed, who knows? Nope, I can confirm that the blade is not spinning, so just this one's on and it's putting enough air to feel it on this side. All right, so let's connect something that needs to be charged and it should go at 300 watts. Okay, as you can see, we're currently drawing more from the wall now. And yeah, this power station from a different company is currently charging at 334 watts using the AC from that port right there. So that's pretty cool. I was thinking that it would actually input slower than it can output, but as you can currently see, it is pulling 613 watts directly from the wall. And it says here that 599 watts are being input and 330 watts are going out. So let's connect a box fan that should draw about 80 additional watts from the unit. And I want to take this little sticker off to see the screen better. So this will be a good test to see if anything gets interrupted at all. So I'm going to let you know if this fan slows down by unplugging that. And no, the fan did not go down. Oh, okay. So this did change to zero. Okay. And then it came back. So it did interrupt, but uh, let's take this off and Let's see if anything interrupts when I plug it back in. So pay attention to the screen. I'm gonna listen for the fan to change. And plugging in. 
Okay, no interruption. And as you can see, 614, 613, 389 watts going out, 599 going in. That screen, I just wish it was a little bit brighter or there was a way to like tell the screen it because if I press AC yeah so then it makes the screen brighter for a moment but it also kills the AC so let's turn AC on there might be ways to get into settings using button combinations that's what the user manual is going to be for I'll take a look at that real quick and if I see anything that catches my attention I'll uh, show it It says the USB-C is for charging. Let's uh, let's try that. Let's see if it charges off a of USB-C. So we'll unplug the AC right here, unplug the uh, power station that was charging, and then I have this uh, thing right here. So let's plug a USB-C in and see if it can accept any thing from that USB-C port. Okay, so it doesn't appear to accept anything from that port. So you cannot charge this unit with the USB-C. All right, I'm going to plug in my ROG Ally X here to the USB-C port. All right, we're at 47% battery and it's putting out 98 watts of power. So we are charging this thing up pretty fast. Let's continue charging this power station and let's continue charging the, the other power station with the AC. And then let's plug in a fan, which will draw about 80, you know, 80 watts or so, 83 watts. And let's see what we can really do with this thing. All right, so we definitely have maxed out what we can input. As you can see, or what hopefully you've been able to tell, that whenever we take away more power, it increases the charging from 400 all the way up to 600. But 600 appears to be the highest that it can go because without the fan, it was still only going at 400 and yeah, 598 without the fan, which was drawing 83 watts. All right, and then we're gonna plug in a Steam Deck with the other USB-C port. All right, so 480 watts. And I'm gonna connect testers to see exactly what is going on. Okay, so I can see on my little tester here that it's currently 60 watts, so let's try that again. All right, it changed to 100. All right, 93 watts, that's fantastic. So look here, 534 watts of output total, still only 599. So we've hit the maximum input possible. And now we're close to that 600 watts that this thing can do for its output. So let's put that down and let's take a look at the Steam Deck, which is currently charging at almost its full speed, 43 watts. It's currently powered off, so let's turn it on. Steam Deck. All right, so what I'm doing now is plugging in a DC powered fridge. Can draw like, I think 60 watts or so. We'll plug that into the DC port here and turn that on. We might just hit the maximum that this thing can do. Oh, we gotta turn the DC port on. All right, so the fridge is 76 degrees Fahrenheit inside it. All right, I can feel some vibration, so it's doing something. Oh, 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 570. And see, that's the downside is now the screen's gonna go dim. And if I press any of those buttons, I lose something. What if I press the light button on the back of the unit here? Okay, cool, so that does something. Oh, yep, so there's the second level of brightness, third level of brightness, and a really, really rapid flash, as you can see, and then turn it into a slow flash, like SOS, and then off. So yeah, we've absolutely hit the maximum allowed with the input here, but that's cool though. Steam Deck is still charging at 43 watts. The ROG Ally X is charging at 93.7. And then we can plug in a couple phones and uh, yeah, <laughs> we can charge a couple USB things. And we also have uh, this little port here. So we're definitely, uh, you know, <laughs> that's cool. All right, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I hope uh, this video has been some sort of informative if you plan on purchasing one of these or you're looking for a affordable power station because there are other power stations out there from much bigger companies, but they also cost a much higher amount. So far, this thing is seeming very capable and it can do a whole lot of stuff all at once. And uh, it's currently telling us that it's gonna take a really long time to charge because 
we can only input 599 and we're taking out 580. So we've only got like 18, 19, 17, somewhere around there watts of input that's extra going into this thing. <laughs> Crazy. Well, I, uh, <laughs> let's turn the DC off. And yeah, see, now it says one hour because it's got about 65, 64 watts of extra power going into it since we turned off the DC fridge. Of course, we could always unplug, you know, an RG Ally, which would save up 100 watts, and we can keep the fridge going, or we can unplug the Steam Deck, that'll be 45 watts. So I'll unplug the uh, Nintendo, or I'm sorry, the R, the, jeez, I'll unplug the Steam Deck, and we're uh, charging up our Nintendo Switch 2 at 15 watts. As you can see, it can go faster than that. All right, let's just start unplugging everything. Oh, that fan's going, let's get that. So it's not obnoxious or anything. We we were definitely pushing the unit to its maximum capabilities, which is exciting, because that I think is going to be the loudest it's going to get, which is pretty great. Except we do know it can get louder because when you very first turn the AC on, it spikes at its highest RPM. Now that we've only got USB-C going because everything else is turned off, it's going to charge up here in just a short bit. And if we turn the USB off. It changes it to 0.1. I'll try to make a YouTube short showing how long it takes to go from empty to full, but at 400 watts and a 500 watt hour battery, I am saying about an hour and a half at 400 watts. So that shouldn't be too bad. That's just guessing. All right, so I was editing the video and uh, I was definitely hearing this little whine right here. And then all of a sudden as I'm editing, I hear this. That's a lot of freaking airflow. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And also, please keep up to date with my YouTube community posts. This is what we Josh do, and I'm out.